a day later and my poopy tummy has finally settled down. I barely got any sleep last night due to whatever stomach sickness I had contracted from over the weekend. But this morning I feel good enough to hit the gym in an attempt to get my body back in order. Be around, driving through the sea. It's just a beer round. But after I worked out, I had to get something off my chest. Okay, so I'm a little, uh, a little frustrated and a little pissed because when I was leaving the gym, the security guard who works there every day uh, sits in front of the gym. In fact, a lot of the businesses here, they have a security guard that just literally just sits all day in front of the, the main entrance. It's like the easiest job in the world. It's like the equivalent of a Walmart greeter. Uh, so anyway... He, he's kind of hinted the last week that, you know, hey, you know, after you work out, you know, maybe you'll sit down for some coffee or something or, you know, maybe you'll, you'll take me out for some coffee. And I, I didn't really, you know, think much of it. And then when I came in this morning, he was like, oh, you know, I haven't seen you for a few days. And I told him, yeah, I've been busy. And he's like, I was kind of hoping that, you know, you'd kind of take me out or, or, or something or, you know, the buy me uh, some drinks or food and I'm like oh yeah you know I've been busy so I thought that was kind of weird and he goes well, well sit down and uh, he's like uh, you know do you want to buy water here and I said uh, sure you know I'll, I'll get a bottle of water you know they sell bottles of water there and I said how much he said well just give me some money you know and you know maybe tip me or something like that and I'm like whatever so I gave him 20,000 dong which is like a buck and uh, he took it anyway, so who knows, maybe the water was like 50 cents and he kept 50 cents. But, uh, you know, as I sat down out of politeness just to chat with him, he was an older guy and he kept hinting that he didn't have any money and that he doesn't get paid till like, you know, the end of the month. And that he kept like pretty blatantly saying, you know, I was kind of hoping that I'd see you, that maybe you kind of, you know, tip me some leasey money, which is kind of like a gift or tip money, like New Year's money or something like that. Um, and I was like, whatever. And, and, uh, he kept saying that. And then finally I just told him I had to go and he goes, Oh, you know, you don't have any like, uh, you know, like gift money for me. And I said, no, I, I don't. I, I just lied and said, I didn't, I don't have any money. You know, I don't get paid until next week. Um, I just said that. And I said, you know, the money that I get paid, I have to take care of family first. He's like, Oh, okay. Well, you know, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. I'm like, Oh yeah. You know, if I'm not busy. But <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to go back. Well, I have two options. Either I'm, I have to find a new gym or I'll just uh, maybe go when he's not working or something, which is late at night, but it's crowded at night. And, you know, he might, I mean, that's not going to stop him from stopping by. And, uh, you know, this is not like, <clears throat> this is not like in the U.S. where I can just go to management and they'll investigate and fire the guy. Because that's not how it works here. If you guys never been to a country like Vietnam, you'll, you'll probably never understand that I really can't do much about it. That's just how it works here. So I think maybe I'll just uh, find a new gym, work out different times with, with no guarantee that he's not going to show up. Or I'll just uh, go to the park and do outdoor exercises with old people. <laughs> Anyway, after working out, the woman came over and we would walk across the street to one of my favorite joints for breakfast, Bonne, with their super cheap menu. Surely you guys remember how much I enjoyed my simple French bread with egg omelet, hot dog, laughing cow cheese, and pate, right? Okay, so I wasn't having much success picking this thing up. How about this? Some may call you king, some may call you clown. Everything you want is out of this town. 
finally washing this thing down with what else? Vietnamese coffee. Do your kids after breakfast, we went to the rich locals shopping center, Pearl Plaza Mall. On the agenda, I wanted to buy some shirts as I didn't bring a lot of clothing with me on this trip. Also, we wanted to look at getting our own rice cooker for my room so I wouldn't have to go downstairs all the time for food. As we explore this fairly empty mall, we see a lot of retailers that bore the piss out of me and probably most guys. I'm a tech and electronic and pop culture window shopper, and the stuff here is mostly clothes, furniture, and jewelry. The barren aisles at least look clean. And here we have proof that this plaza is for ballers. California fitness and yoga. Purely a status symbol here for the rich and famous and not much else. I detest this place. Upstairs we have the movie theater where last year I saw the horrible Fifty Shades Darker with the woman on Valentine's Day. Also cool that they're showing the Star Wars movie here. Too bad they're not showing disaster artists though. We eventually made our way into Coop Mart, or is it Co-op Mart? Here, like back in Tainin, we should be able to find my shirts and rice cooker. But you see, there are two problems with men's shirts here in Vietnam. One, they're generally too small for me. I wear size large, and here it has to be XXL. Second, men's fashion here has a love affair with button-up shirts. It's everywhere here. Not my style. I need regular shirts, damn it. Eventually, we decided that the rice cookers here were too expensive and that we could probably find one cheaper in the street markets. Also, as I was leaving, I once again noticed the X-Men fragrance ripoff. Later at the street market near me, we picked up a rice cooker for about $10. What a deal! On the way back, we picked up some fresh sugarcane juice to cool us off from the sweaty walking. Finally, we stopped by a street concession stand selling fried items, so we got stuff for lunch and dinner. Okay, we just got back shopping for lunch, and we got a big jug of water, a stinging soda, a fried piece of shrimp, a fried uh, cheese stick, and two giant fried uh, chicken legs, chicken drumsticks, all for just barely over $4. So. Although I am a cheapskate back in the States, I don't have to worry about it so much here because everything is so cheap. Whoa, look at the size of this drumstick. It's huge. So as the woman and I were walking, we were walking down a very narrow alley that has like a lot of street vendors that sell everything from clothes to um, household items to food, fresh food, of course. And of course, we were kind of looking for some shirts. I didn't bring a lot of shirts to this trip. I had limited packing and uh, I, I just brought a few shirts thinking that I'll just buy some shirts when I'm here. So that's what we were doing. Well, we walked by a street vendor guy who had um, a rack of shirts on his shoulder as he was walking. And as we walked past him, the woman was like, oh, let's get it from this guy. She pointed at him. The funny thing is he immediately looked at me and he goes, no, no, it's not going to fit him. And he kept walking, which is really funny because under most circumstances, I think most of the street vendors here would do anything to make a quick buck and then just hope that by the time I try the shirt on, they're long gone. So... Funny. Later in the evening, I got back to work, with the help of coffee, of course. 